Hi, I am Michael Bean, and this is your lesson for myfreeactingclass.com for what is today, uh, Thursday, September the 10th. Hey, I'm a little bit behind in uh, getting the videos uploaded, so I'm going to uh, have those up by tomorrow morning at the latest, uh, so you can, anybody who wasn't uh, here for the previous lesson this week uh, can see everything that we're doing. So um, you can always check out the video archive uh, on the website at myfreeactingclass.com. Uh, today we're going to be joined by actress Laura Bertram. She's going to talk to us about her recent experience on set uh, and uh, we can ask her about anything we want. I'm going to ask her to do some general overview of her life as an actor and then we can kind of go from there. Uh, so let me show you a little bit about Laura just to start. I told her that she should come at 3.33 if she wanted to skip the part where I talked about how amazing she is. Uh, so uh, what we've got is Laura Bertram uh, here on IMDb, the Internet Movie Database, known for Ready or Not, 5050, Are You Afraid of the Dark, Andromeda. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of credits here, uh, the, including a recurring role uh, here on One Calls the Heart, you know, uh, another one on uh, Robson Arms, uh, Andromeda. Uh, looks like she did 109 episodes of uh, this uh, TV series, uh, Andromeda, 2000 to 2005. Uh, and uh, 65 episodes of Ready or Not between 1993 and 1997, which if I remember right, you know, was when she was a teenager. Um, you know, these kind of recurring characters uh, are the kind of thing that uh, not just cements an actor's career, but gives them the opportunity to develop and inc internalize an incredible level of skill, you know, if they are like a focused and disciplined actor uh, like Laura is. Because you can imagine being on set um, every day, you know, or you know, four days out of five, or you know, whatever those kind of shooting schedules are, having the opportunity to just do that same thing for hours a day, you know, every day, of course, that's just going to get it in your body. And, uh, and so we can talk to her a little bit about that. Um, I went looking for a demo reel and didn't find one. Uh, so here's a whole bunch of pictures of Laura being awesome. Pictures, 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 pictures. Uh, I found uh, a little clip of her character from Andromeda, which, you know, I, I never watched the show, but... Did everything turn out the way it was supposed to? Uh, it's Laura Bertram. Bad, and they're getting worse. I'm detecting... Uh, the, you found uh, some great clips of her talking to Seth Rogen, you know, in uh, the film 5050. Uh, the... Uh, Seth Rogen, if you don't know who he is, then you've been living in a cave because, you know, he is a huge star. Uh, That's awful. He's got type 4 back cancer. And, uh, oh, no. Yeah, I, I know that uh, Laura had a really substantial role in that film. Again, it's a film that I haven't seen, but I thought it would be fun to show you, like, just some little clips of Laura in action so that when you see her face, you're like, oh, hey, I saw that lady on IMDb. And Michael Bean says that she is amazing. Uh, Laura is also uh, a mother of two uh, and somebody who uh, taught four years at my studio. Uh, and uh, oh, there you are. See, you're not plugging your ears and going la la la. I'm going to make you feel all self conscious. This is, and this is Laura's self conscious face uh, when, that she makes when somebody else is talking about how amazing she is. Um, hey, it's Laura Bertram! Uh, you're going to need to unmute yourself. There. I'm unmuted. <laughs> Hi. Uh, thanks so much for making time to join us today. I really appreciate it. Thank you for inviting me, Michael. Um, yeah, so Hi, everyone. <laughs> you saw the, uh, the <laughs> website, um, but I'll just give you the quick overview, which is that we've got a really mixed uh, skill level, really mixed age group. You know, so you've got awesome. uh, folks who are as young as like seven or eight, you know, who uh, watch the YouTube videos. You know, they're not here right now because it, you know, school started again and you know, we're adjusting the times a little bit maybe. Uh, you know, then we've got folks who have uh, a few professional credits, you know, and then folks who are just really coming to this for the first time. You know? Cool. Uh, but uh, we, you know, so my thought is that we would start with uh, just sort of me asking some questions. Sure. And uh, then, you know, at some point, you know, when sort of we feel like we've given them enough to jump off with their own stuff, you know, then uh, we'll open it up and see what questions people sure. have for them. Yeah, yeah sounds good. Thanks. Um, and so one of the things that, you know, uh, we've, that I've talked a lot about in these lessons, you know, probably to the point where people are like, oh my God, Michael Bean, stop talking about this stuff, uh, you know, is how the journey for actors of internalizing these skills so that they can come across on camera as confident 
you know, mm. and, that, you know and uh that the the skill set itself is not magic you know that it's something that you can sort of get inside you with practice mm -hmm. uh, we've also had you know uh, actors and casting directors and producers and things you know come in and talk about how um the uh, they expect that the process is going to involve you know some some discomfort you know, that, it, that it doesn't have to be like magical and perfect. But every time we get some new actor to talk about it, I think it's one more piece of evidence. So can you talk a little bit about your own journey as an actor, you know, from, you know, kind of when you first started to this place that you are now? I mean, I know that's a lot to cover in, you know, four minutes, but just some yeah. of a little <laughs> sense of like what that has been for you. Sure. Um, I started when I was quite young. So interestingly enough, um, being able to teach young actors has been a real privilege because you kind of get to see them at the beginning of their journey as a performer, as an actor. Um, in looking back, I don't know how much acting I actually did. <laughs> I think when you're quite young, the less studied an air, the more receptive people are to you and your performance. Um, Ironically, that's exactly what we as adults, when we are adult performers, are striving for. And yet as a child, it's completely effortless. That's my opinion. Um, so I think I had the ability to, to dive in with a project that ended up becoming a five-year series where I learned on the, on the go. Um, I was able to watch mentor, like the actors that I realized became my mentors later. And, learned from them the things that perhaps a 12 or 13 year old wouldn't necessarily know coming in into a profession. And um, I was very fortunate in the sense that they gave me the space to be authentic and to really be the kid that I was. And it wasn't like just this miniature adult that was expected to have adult responsibilities. So for me, my introduction to acting was just, how would you feel if you did this and now go do it? And that kind of was the um, the beginning of how it worked for me. And oddly enough, it kind of evolved professionally from that. Of course, what works for you when you're 13 and 14 doesn't work for you when you're 23 and 24. So you realize, okay, there has to be more involved. And that more involved in is reading, it's um, educating yourself, it's studying. Um, and so, the evolution went from what's easy and comfortable as a kid, um, finding that ease and comfort um, with a certain degree of, I wouldn't even say wisdom. You can't say 23, you have wisdom, <laughs> but it would involve experience and thought and process. And that's something that um, as you, develop as an actor, you realize there's so much more to it in terms of investing time. It's not just, oh, this is how I feel, so I'm just gonna go with it. That's an element, but you need to do the work. You need to do homework. You need to mine the character or the situation. Find a way to access it from a base of knowledge as opposed to a base of simply winging it. We've all, we've all done it where we've just, been winging it and sometimes it works and sometimes it's like yes but it doesn't always get you where you need to go so having a, a good amount of education in terms of self-education and research and putting the onus back on yourself and then taking your instincts and um, allowing them to travel with you through this journey of education is really important and I think that as a performer I, I realized and certainly still um, need to take class. I still need to educate myself. I'm still reading. I'm actually signed up for class starting next week. Um, and I missed it because I had <laughs> really young kids and could not stay up till 10 o'clock at night without just really suffering the next day. So it's taken a long time to get to a point where I can do night class again, but I'm doing it, I'm so excited. And to me, that feeds me as a performer is the education process. And maybe it's because I kind of like that anyway, maybe I gravitate towards that. But I find that having a- 
you, I, today you've got an audience of all people you know, who are making time on a sunny afternoon to hang out with us. So you're, you're probably talking to people you know, who agree <laughs> with you in terms of values. Yeah, that's very true. It's kind of our last day of summer. Um, yes, so thank you um, for being here on that last day. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like it, it's one of these things you'll never grow out of the need to be educated. And I'm not trying to be elitist when I say that. I'm actually just trying to encourage everyone to keep mining and keep finding things. Find what inspires you. It's that energy, that, that inspiration and, and that fire. We always get scripts as actors that are less than inspiring. So try and find that little nugget in that script that will speak to you or that you can relate to. Use that as your launching pad into performance. Um, I think we can all find them. And it's just about the willingness to go, the willingness to research, to mine, to find those little gems. Sometimes we get a script that is so well written, you're like, oh my gosh, I don't even have to do work. This is just coming out. It's so easy. Not all of them will be that way. And not all of them will be inspiring. Um, but there will always be elements that you can either relate to or mine, as it were. Yeah, and so for those moments. You've I'm I mean, you've been at this, you said, since you were 12, you know. Or, yeah, like, yeah, a yeah. long time. <laughs> um, so you've experienced, you know, like uh, ups and downs, you know, like being oh, yeah. 100 episodes of a TV show and, and then, you know, like having periods where, you know, you were sort of struggling, you know, like. Oh, for sure. Too. Um, but you're still here, you know, and you're still doing it. And so there must be something that uh, you love about it. You know, so can you oh, talk yeah. about like, what has helped you uh, like keep the love for acting alive? Like what are those things mm -hmm. for you of right now, you know, that interest you or engage you or that keep you loving it? Um, it's so true. It's like, I, do you know, I'll share, I'll share just a little quick anecdote before I get to exactly what you're talking about, but they're in those lulls and there's many as a performer, when you don't fill them with things that feed you, and that can be, it doesn't always have to be acting, but something that fills you and with joy or fills you with some sort of peace or I, I'll just use the word creativity or creation. Um, you can go to the place of where you're like, well, this isn't feeding me anymore. I'm walking away. And I, I remember a couple times I tried walking away. I was thinking, no, I'm going to just, no. I'm just going to go do this. And every time I was so miserable, it's like, why am I so miserable? Oh yeah. I love what that is. So no, it's not paying my bills. I'm going to find other ways to pay my bills and still do what I love. And too bad if it doesn't make me money, but I realize what it does is it makes me happy. Mm -hmm. And I realized that that was more important. So I did, I went and, and I did other things, right? You just kind of got to, find other ways to to pay your bills but don't abandon that feeling in within and and that creative force is within all of us and it just manifests in different ways for me it's as an actor but it, writers dancers painters we all have it and it's not just art mathematicians have it there are people in this world who have missed the opportunity and it doesn't mean you have to make money on it for it to feed your soul H hallelujah if it does oh my gosh like all right so let's, let's bottle that up while they're around. yeah yeah <laughs> but um so anyways so I, I, it. yeah i do love it i love it so much and i and i'm blessed that i'm able to make it a career and that it's worked with me um there it's just learning how to work with it and i think if I can divert us back to like our current times, this COVID situation we're all in, um, th there's never been a time where we have gotten so used to just being um, in screen relationships. <laughs> and we're on screen. The irony is, is that it's an on screen relationship when we watch film or we watch television. But um, for actors, it's learning how to be able to. Um, connect with um, the artifice of presence. Um, and I, I feel like 
the only way we can continue to strive for that connection is to find ways to to work with the tools we have here. So like part of the class I'm taking starting next week is like, how do we connect? Like, how do we actually make Zoom a platform for connection that isn't just um, watching ourselves in the screen and then occasionally looking at other people's heads on the screen. And like, we're trying to make this an actual forum. And then how do you land jobs doing that? That's the, that's the added thing. When you're a professional actor or you're striving to be a professional actor, working toward it, and that's what we're all doing all the time. We're all just working toward it. Um, how do we make that connection? And I haven't found a great way yet. Um, hopefully I'll have some more answers after I take my class. Um, but uh, I think just trying hard, just try hard and continue to, continue to reflect back on what are those things that feed you mm -hmm. emotionally and keep that as your guide. Cause this is, this is like temporary weirdness that we are just rolling with because we have to. And um, let's make the most of it instead of making it our, our, our um, stumbling block. Let's make it our launching pad. Can I have a thought? Um, mm -hmm. I had um, a client of mine who was you know, in Los Angeles reach out recently and say like, I, a, a version of the same thing you just said, which is like, how do I find connection on Zoom? Like I'm, I'm not finding it. You know, and uh, my, um, my answer to her, you know, uh, and, or my sincere, and my sincere hope, you know, based on what I've seen happen over the last six months, because I've been teaching you know, sometimes every day, you know, like uh, on Zoom for the last you know, five, six months, you know, is that as it becomes more familiar, there's more connection available. Yeah. You know, and that, that a big piece of the disconnect at the beginning is just how unfamiliar it feels. Yeah. You know, like it's, it's not what we're used to, especially those of us who've been no. taking classes, you know, uh, and working on set you know, for a very long time. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Uh, you're right. I mean, we all adapt. We all have to. I mean, it's just the nature of humanity, right? Um, but it's finding the way to be able to do it with grace. That is so hard. It's so hard. And, um, you know, things that you think resonate um, in the room are different than the things that will resonate on camera through this lens. So I'm, I'm, I'm finding it too. I, I don't know it. I don't have a I don't have a magic eight ball. I can't figure it out either, but I'm working on it. And I encourage you guys all to do the same because I feel like when you can find something that works, um, it's, it's so amazing. Um, but you know, just don't make that the only goal, make the connection a goal and then everything else will come later. Beautiful. I'm hoping. <laughs> <laughs> that's a goal that's what we've got right now that's what we've got <laughs> that's what we've got <laughs> yeah thank yeah. you for that um the uh well um we could take this you know uh, more into talking about sort of the the like internal world of the actor this uh, seems sure. like really alive for you today you know you also uh, had some things that you wanted to say about um like the uh experience of being on set you know which direction yeah. do you I guess it's kind of whatever people want to hear. I mean, I'm happy to share what it's like now, um, if it's useful, if it's not. Um, yeah. You, you know, if that's useful, I'm happy to talk about it. So um, in BC, where I live, um, in British Columbia, we went back to work mid-July. We were given the thumbs up, go back to work. But of course, that thumbs up, going back to work is, it's um, very different from what we were used to in terms of being able to go to work and um, in, a, in a more comfortable atmosphere. But the, the fortunate thing is, is that certainly where, where I am, everyone's very eager to work. None of us really qualified anyway for those great programs that, you know, that were made available to us. Um, so sometimes, necessity makes you a very willing participant in things that might otherwise make you feel a little uncomfortable to forge ahead. Um, good news is, is like the, the set that I work, I've worked on two shows since I've gone back, since we've gone back. 
and both were very responsible. They were both really cognizant of the fact that people were, um, you know, not just not necessarily at risk, but that people were working as a community and that we had to really take care of one another. Um, there was masks. So that also kind of creates a, a very physical, obvious divide between us. Um, there was uh, lots of cleanliness. Funny enough, I actually think people on set are going to get less sick because we're probably paying way more attention to hygiene than we ever did. So I'm interested to see in six months if people got sick or not. Like it, it just would be very interesting because there's hand washing stations everywhere. And then um, just a lot, a lot more solitary time or bubble time. So on set, the two different sets operated a little bit differently. So the one set, I worked on a, a new series that's going to be airing um, in the new year called Family Law and they have bubbles. So they would send all of the actors together and there would be, we'd be one pod. And then there would be the camera pod and then there would be the electrics pod, grips, sound. They all had their own little pod. The director had the privilege of moving from pod to pod, but she was very um, respectful of space, respectful, you know, there was like air high fives. We weren't, we weren't touching. Um, but they did it in a really um, exceptional way to make sure that everyone felt comfortable enough to be there, you know, 12 to 14 hours a day. The second set didn't have the bubbles, um, which was a little bit confusing. So different shows will have different expectations. They weren't necessarily more, um, or sorry, any less um, careful. It was just a little bit different. I will share a story though. I was on set and the makeup artist on this second show has asked me, please don't wear your mask because it actually carves out where the makeup goes. And because on set, they're actually not allowed to come up to you and touch you once you've gone on. There's like protocol galore. So she's trying to make sure that her job is done before I go out so we can minimize people contact. But as a result, I don't get to wear a mask. And um, so, you know, everyone has their own feelings about that, how comfortable they are with one or without one. Um, I wear it because I'm more comfortable knowing that the community knows that I care about them. Um, I know where I've been, I know how healthy I am, but they don't know how healthy I am or where I have been. So out of respect to them, I wear my mask. Well, when I didn't get to wear my mask, I felt a little bit like I had to explain myself. And when I went to the lunch truck to go get some lunch, I got called up by the caterer who told me that he didn't really want to serve me because I was disrespecting him by not wearing a mask. So all of those things that you think we work collaboratively and together for one another, there, there are times like this where it's kind of volatile and it makes you feel scared and a little bit um, culpable for transgressions that you may or may not be taking on or making, I should say. However, I mean, the air was cleared. They realized that that was because someone else requested it. So <laughs> good news is, is that the air was cleared, but it, it is a little bit tense. So it makes sometimes it makes working a little bit more challenging in a comfortable atmosphere because it's not really comfortable right now. Um, but I feel like those are also opportunities for us as performers to take those uncomfortable moments and inventory them. And then we can turn that into informed decision making in our performance. So these, I've told Michael, let's make, let's take our lemons, our social lemons, and we're going to make lemonade. So why not take these unusual circumstances we're in, forcing us to isolate, forcing us to retreat when humanity require, like requires within, we, we desire connection. Take those, take those experiences and make those moments as an observer. These are observation points that are gold mines for actors. So let's take those feelings and those experiences we're having and turn them into something that will serve us instead of making us feel like there are stumbling blocks.
I just feel like it's such an opportunity and sometimes in, in the face of change that's thrust upon us, we lament what was. And instead of that, let's just say, okay, new day, I'm starting. This is something I'm going to put in my portfolio, in my toolbox, and I got to use this. And so that's kind of how moving forward we got to, or that's how I've chosen to look at it. So I'm hoping for some meaty stuff that requires lots of angst. <laughs> <sighs> oh, good. Um, mm -hmm. Well, I could keep asking you questions for a very long time, mm -hmm. but let's see if anybody here. Oh, please, has yeah. Uh, that they want to ask. You. So just you, know, you can wave your arm in the air, you know, uh, or you can in the participants window. You'll find a little like raise a hand, you know, and it makes a little blue hand appear in the corner. Of the <laughs> uh, the I've never used that feature before. That blue hand. Yeah, yeah, uh, it's it's good, especially. I mean, we're up to thirteen people, and you know, sometimes this group gets. Yeah, it's great. So it becomes more functional then. So the same person, so it's not the person who uh, is the most comfortable shouting their question out, who always gets their question answered. That's fair. Uh, is it anybody uh, want to ask something to Laura? Hmm. Uh, Don, please. Uh, this is more a comment than a question, just back to the Zoom stuff, because uh, I'm really fortunate um, in that my day job, right, we don't make a lot of money acting sometimes, we got good years, we get bad years, um, but my day job has required me to teach over Zoom. So the connection does come, and it's it's more than adapting, it's, it's there's some point where you do find the humanity in it, and you learn to see a camera lens as a human eye, um, so just on that note, I kind of wanted to reassure everybody in this room that's struggling with that, right? How, how am I going to perform to a, a webcam the same way you perform to your cell phone when you can't find a friend to read with? Um, at, at the other end of that lens is a human, and we just have to remember that. And then it's really easy to pull the rest into place. Thanks. So. Oh, well said. That's good to remember. Thank you. I does. You know, anybody else have a question for Laura? Because I've got a great one, but, <laughs> but I don't want to sidetrack yours. Uh, uh? Uh, okay, uh, uh, Laura, uh, the, what are some of the things that uh, you are doing right now you know, with you know, sort of all of this uncertainty, you know, like as an artist for yourself you know, to fill the well? You know, so you, you talked about, you know, like this, sort of this is your hope that like you know, <laughs> like take all this angst and, and be able to make art with it, you know, and like oh, like may it be so, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, the um, can you talk about you know like what you are uh, giving to yourself as an artist now, whether it's you know, no, regardless of what that looks like, you know, it sounds like uh, going to class, you know, mm -hmm. is one. Well, it's, it's just starting. So yeah, definitely returning to class. And this is a remarkable time in our lives, kind of echoing what Donald had said, just this idea that we can take class at so many different times of day from our home. Um, it's, it's really an amazing thing. Um, that said, I, have, I do have two little kids, so I only get <laughs> time to focus when their dad is upstairs making dinner right now or when they're asleep. So I have to take night times, but um, yeah, taking class for sure. The other thing I've been doing a lot of is I've been out walking and I find that this also kind of just is really good. It's like kind of outdoor meditation and the meditation is not necessarily something highly practiced or exercised. It's just deciding to go out and I'm going to be aware of the, air I'm breathing and I'm going to be aware of how amazing that tree is and it's just the being present and I think my exercise and presence has really um I, I realized how valuable it is and how important it is to me now um being able to just be yeah present that is the only way to describe it being aware and being present it's informing me a lot and then it's also just kind of um feeding my soul because I, I, we need clarity. 
from time to time. And this is a time in my life I need a lot of clarity. Um, and it, it, it makes me just feel a little bit more relaxed so that when I get down to brass tacks and when I do the work, I can do the work because I've taken enough time to take care of myself. And that's what I've been doing. And I'm reading a couple of really good books, which also helps. So mm. combined, Beautiful. there's a lot to feed my soul. <laughs> uh, Laura, um, do you uh, <laughs> take a look at the uh, chat window? If there's a couple of little questions in there. Oh, okay. Oh um, yeah. So oh my like gosh. Fair, like I didn't <laughs> listen to make this statement. Uh, but uh, you, uh, remember, uh, I don't know uh, how uh, Laura said I was going to try and convince you to uh, to come in and teach uh, you know some more of these. Um, I yeah. Love it. it was like, does she have a podcast? <laughs> like, <laughs> where, where do I get more of Laura Bertram? <laughs> <laughs> well, but, thanks. That's very kind. Uh, um, yeah, I'd love to come back and do more, Michael. Thank you for the invite. Good. Oh, it's so good. Is, is there a place where people can uh, find you or follow you, you know, that is in the internet world? I, I have um, the w only one that I use because I'm a bit of a Luddite, which means like I'm terrible with technology, let's be honest. Um, but I think uh, the only one I really use and it's once in a while is my Instagram feed and it's it is me, Laura B all lowercase. It is me, Laura B. Um, so that is my kind of only social media platform. And I've never done podcasts before. Um, that's kind of an interesting thought. But I don't know. I'd have to figure out. I'd have to do some research book online, um, which is not my forte, but something that I would consider doing. Um, but in the meantime, podcast aside, I would love to come back, Michael. And thank you for inviting me. It's okay. a pleasure. And I hope that it's been interesting and helpful to other people too. So, you know, just being able to be here and, and have a forum is, that's a big deal, Michael. The, um, well, the, I appreciate you leading with so much vulnerability, you know, like it just makes what you say resonate so much more strongly. Thank you. <laughs> Um, all right, like we could keep, you know, talking to Laura for a long time, but you know, it's, <laughs> her husband won't be cooking dinner forever. You know, and all of y'all. Oh. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the, you know, uh, you know, uh, unmute yourselves, you know, and uh, and uh, show some love. You know, and then we'll wrap there. No. Yeah. <laughs> Thank thanks so much, Laura. Okay, thanks. As my Thank seven, seven year old comes in. <laughs> Bye, guys. There's the star of the show. See you later. Bye. Bye, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.